Everyone has their favorite controller, right? When you think about it, the pad, joystick, remote, whatever, tends to be one of the console's defining aspects, shaping the way you're going to play on that system for the next however many years. But what if you don't love it? I mean, I didn't care for the N64 controller at all, and I think that it severely affected my enjoyment of that system. So what if you could replace a controller that you dislike with one that you do like? On this Tips and Tweaks, we're going to take a look at some controller adapters that allow you to use a controller from one console on another. Back when the GameCube Game Boy Player released, I bought an inexpensive adapter to use a DualShock 2 on the GameCube. But as silly as it sounds, I found myself not enjoying playing Game Boy games with a PlayStation controller. I later imported the well-renowned Hori Pad instead, but as you may know, those are pretty expensive these days. In testing this adapter again more recently, I found that it actually performs really well and could serve as an inexpensive Hori Pad alternative, if you can still find this one or something similar. But in this episode, we want to go more in depth on a selection of different adapters that you can actually easily buy today. A while back on Tips and Tweaks, we showed you a mod for putting a vaguely GameCube-esque stick inside an N64 controller. The results were a bit mixed, and the experience really gave me a newfound appreciation for just how much nuance there really is to the N64 stick's range of movement. But in the meantime, what if we just used an actual GameCube controller on the N64? Thanks to RafNet Technologies, who provide us with an adapter that does just that, this is now a possibility. Let's first get the analog stick part out of the way. How does it perform? Well, a heck of a lot better than the cheap replacement stick we tried before. In fact, I couldn't find any issues whatsoever with its sensitivity, dead zone, or directional range. Many N64 games, perhaps most notably Super Mario 64, feature characters with more degrees of speed than we're used to seeing in many modern games. I was very pleased to see that Mario's precision movement is kept well intact while using a GameCube controller, with a comfortable amount of the stick's range dedicated to Mario's slower speeds. If your GameCube sticks happen to be in poorer shape, then the adapter can toggle a larger dead zone on or off. The GameCube to N64 adapter also passes other common sensitivity tests, like Smash Attacks in Super Smash Bros. and the Quick Spin in the Zelda games. It's comfortable for power sliding in Mario Kart 64, smooth turns in F-Zero X, and it even succeeds in and survives the Mario Party portrait. But I am never again subjecting my GameCube sticks to that kind of abuse. There seems to be no perceptible added input lag, none that I can notice anyway. RafNet even has its own utility software for N64 flashcards, which can not only be used to update the adapter's firmware, but can also be used to test button response and the sensitivity of any N64 controller. So it gets the basics right, but what else can it do? When I first plugged it in, I was a bit concerned. Button mapping translates from the N64 controller very literally, which is great for A and B, but this leaves critical Z button functions on the awkward GameCube Z button, and the X and Y buttons do nothing at all. But thankfully, this is no simple adapter, and you aren't stuck with the default button mapping. In fact, you can easily program your own configuration and save up to four profiles. The RafNet website actually has a neat mapping table that lets you choose how each GameCube button, stick, and analog trigger functions. This then generates a code. How do you use it? Well, with the game and N64 system turned on, 
Hold the start button for several seconds. A red light turns on and control to the game is dropped. Then simply enter the button combination from the website. If you like what you've done, you can save it. Now call me crazy, but I've got a big soft spot for the N64 controller. But I am a big fan of the GameCube controller too. Sure, both controllers have their share of flaws, but I really think Nintendo was onto something when they ditched the diamond face button layout for a few generations. Playing any N64 game with another controller requires some special considerations and would take a bit of convincing for me to use a different one. So I really thought about it. What would I want to do with a GameCube controller on my N64? And I came up with four profiles that I could really see myself using. And it was actually really fun. First up, I'm just calling this one standard. It's a baseline profile that maps buttons to more immediately useful locations than the default. The N64Z button goes to the GameCube's L trigger, while X, Y, and Z double as alternate inputs for C right, C left, and C down respectively. This doesn't remove the same functionality from the C stick, but simply puts C access on extra buttons for games where that would feel more natural, like for items in Zelda. The C stick, by the way, activates its button presses at a 50% tilt and works really well, at least as camera control. By default, analog presses of R and L do not activate, but I felt like pressing all the way to the click wasn't ideal, so I also set those to activate Z and R respectively when pressed to 50%. But well, what about this? What if I use the same profile with the Hori Pad? The more compact and SNES-like design just seems like a perfect fit for some of the system's side-scrollers. Even with this lack of a C stick, with the simple C button functions for games like Kirby 64 being mapped to the X, Y, and Z buttons, I was really having a blast. I have been meaning to replay Kirby 64, and I think this is exactly how I'm going to do it. My second profile is almost exactly like the first, but it's designed to automatically invert camera controls, or rather, reverse them to non-inversion. Back in the N64's day, and even through much of the following generation, inversion was standard not just for vertical camera controls, but also horizontal controls. Camera controls eventually started to shift toward non-inversion by default. I heavily resisted this at first, but I decided to suck it up and get used to non-inversion, and I'm really glad I did, except for the fact that it's now tough to go back a few generations where inversion options aren't guaranteed. So let's just map C right to C left and C left to C right. Same applies to the vertical. Inversion still seems natural to me in old favorites that I've played to death like Super Mario 64, but I can see myself actually using this non-inverted profile with some of my N64 games that I haven't played through yet. My third profile mixes things up a bit more. What if we could give N64 first-person shooters a modern control scheme on a slightly more modern controller? I specifically made this profile for Goldeneye and Perfect Dark, but it could easily be tweaked to suit probably most any first-person shooter on the system. I've always used the default control scheme in both games, which involves turning on the stick, not strafing, which quickly became outdated. But, Control Type 1.2 sets the analog stick to aiming, with movement and strafing set to the C buttons. So, we can map the analog stick axes to the C stick, and the C button to the left stick, with movement and strafing set to activate at 50% presses in any direction. Put Z on R, R on L, and that's all there is to it. To be honest, I'm a bit weirded out by the result. I'm just not used to playing these particular games this way. The only downside is that aiming is a bit quick for my taste, though that's just how stick aiming is designed in the game, not a fault of the adapter.
And lastly, my fourth profile is super game specific. You might have noticed that we like to feature mischief makers in N64 related episodes, and it's not just because it's a pretty 2D game. It's a really fun and extremely unique side scroller by Treasure. Since it requires the D-pad, it kind of plays like garbage on a GameCube controller. That should in turn make it a perfect fit for the Hori Pad, except that its control scheme relies on heavy use of the C buttons for its admittedly very technical and challenging controls. So can we make this work? R and L perform equivalent functions and are fairly unimportant in Mischief Makers, so I set them to the Hori Pad's admittedly not so bad Z button. I set C left to L, C right to R, C up to Y, and C down to X. And you know, from a bit of light testing, I really think it works. I can perform C button dashes without my thumb ever straying from the jump button, so it might actually be easier to perform some of the game's more demanding acrobatics. I'm admittedly very out of practice at Mischief Makers, so I don't expect to come to a firm conclusion on this one anytime soon. There are a few downsides to using a GameCube controller, like for example you'd have to keep an N64 controller with a controller pack on hand to swap for saving in games that require it, and there's no rumble functionality. The plastic that the adapter is constructed with makes me think of a dollar store kazoo, but I don't think it's going to break or anything. So for an adapter that I didn't feel a particular need for, I have to admit it's actually extremely well thought out, really fun to customize, and offers a world of possibilities that I never considered beyond just controller preference. Leading up to the launch of the Wii in 2006, I read a news article about a briefcase full of replica controllers for each of the systems that the Virtual Console was going to support. Ultimately, these replicas were never made available to the public, and instead we were stuck using a sideways Wii remote, or a classic controller designed to work universally with all games on the Virtual Console. While both of these were viable options, it wasn't quite what I was looking for. Once again, we have RefNet Technologies to thank for a controller adapter that would finally fulfill my long lost dream of using an original Sega Genesis controller with my Wii Virtual Console games. As with the GameCube to N64 adapter that Tri covered, this was provided to us by RefNet Technologies. This lightweight dongle connects to your Wii remote just like any classic controller and provides a standard 9 pin input so you can connect a Genesis controller of your choosing. It supports both 3 and 6 button variations of the Genesis controller, so don't stress out about your favorite style of controller not working. According to RafNet specs, this adapter has only a 3 millisecond response time between pressing the input, the dongle transcoding the signal, and it hitting the Wiimote. Needless to say, you're probably not going to notice any lag while using it, at least none that's caused by this peripheral. But then again, specs are just specs, so let's put this adapter through its paces and see how it does. Alright, it makes sense to start out with some Genesis games, right? I transferred all of my Virtual Console games to the Wii U back during the launch of the system, so I'm stuck having to test most games on that system. Of course, there should be zero difference between the two, so it shouldn't be an issue. Everything feels just as you'd expect it to which it should, given that this adapter is simply remapping the inputs from a classic controller and assigning them to where they should be on a Genesis controller. That means that Y, B, and A on a classic controller are mapped to A, B, and C on a Genesis pad. Rip. For six button games, L, X, and R are mapped to X, Y, and Z. As you'd expect, the plus button serves as start on the classic controller, and that is reflected on the Genesis controller. True to their word, if there's any kind of input lag, I sure as heck didn't notice. Doing flips in Revenge of Shinobi felt right on the money, even though you have a small window to hit the C button at the peak of your jump. Ghouls and Ghosts felt tight and responsive, too. And Streets of Rage 3 felt great with its true six-button control layout. If you're a big virtual console enthusiast and kept your VC games on the Wii, then you are in for a treat. Combining a real Genesis controller and playing on a CRT at a native 240p resolution, 
The look and feel is about as authentic of an experience as you can expect from official emulation. The Sega Master System uses the exact same 9-pin controller connection that the Genesis did, so it would make sense that the Master System controller would work just as well, right? The SMS controller is indeed officially supported according to RAFNET's site, and it works like a charm. I tested it on several games, like Alex Kidd The Lost Stars, and one of my favorites, Secret Command. But you know, you might just want to use a Genesis controller with your Master System games anyways. And not because the controller's directional pad is a million times better. As all Master System owners know, Sega annoyingly designed the console with the pause button on the power base itself. When playing these games on the virtual console using a sideways Wii remote, this functionality was rightfully mapped to the plus button. Unfortunately, using a Master System controller on the Wii Remote cuts off this ability, and you'll have to unplug the adapter to pause your game. However, if you opt for a Genesis controller instead, this functionality is restored. You know, people who play on real hardware never had it this good. So, that about covers it, right? Well, this adapter makes the Genesis controller function as a Classic controller, so it'll work with everything that the Classic controller does. So, let's have some fun and see how it translates to other platforms. Obviously, the first test that I went for is with Super NES games on the Virtual Console. You'll have to use a Genesis Sticks button controller to even do this. As fun as this was to try, I found pretty quickly that the button placement can get a bit wonky at times, especially with the L and R buttons being mapped to X and Z on the Genesis controller. For instance, in F0, you'll run into some issues when you have to make a sharp turn without taking your finger off the accelerator. If you absolutely want to make this work, prepare to use the claw hand technique. Of course, playing games on the Wii U Virtual Console, you can customize the control however you like, so this might open some options for you. But in most instances, nothing really has the same convenience as some good old-fashioned shoulder buttons. This also rings true if you're trying to play Game Boy Advance games on the Wii U VC. On the flip side, if you're like me, then this is the combo you've always wished for as a kid when it comes to Street Fighter 2. The superior version of the game, with the superior controller. Does it even matter these days with so many ports of the game and countless controller options? Eh, probably not, but it's cool to see what could have been. Probably the biggest deal breaker is that none of the buttons on the Genesis pad have an equal to the SNES's select button. So you're out of luck if you're playing a game that uses it heavily, like Super Metroid. If you want to do something really crazy and play some NES or TurboGrafx-16 games on a controller with an infinitely inferior D-pad, you'll be happy to hear that a Master System controller works just fine, except you can't start or pause your game without unplugging the adapter first. But hey, who really wants to use an SMS controller on this stuff anyways? Of course, you do get start button functionality back when using a Genesis controller. But alas, still no select. What about other eShop games that support the Classic controller? One of the main things that originally interested me in this adapter was being able to play Freedom Planet and other retro-inspired games with a Genesis controller, almost as if they had been originally developed for that platform. Most of the games that I tried, like Mighty Switch Force and Mutant Muds, felt right at home with the Genesis controller. But disappointingly, Shovel Knight isn't fully playable due to using the minus button to access the submenu. The aforementioned Freedom Planet does feel like it was pretty much made for this controller, though. Finally, I tried out some retail games with the Genesis controller, and it played pretty good with Yoshi's Woolly World on the Wii U and Klonoa on the Wii. Unfortunately, I don't own a lot of games that support a classic controller without needing an analog stick, so that's about where my testing ended. RAFNET's Genesis to Wii adapter was obviously meant to create an authentic virtual console experience. But let's not forget that this adapter will work with any game that supports a classic controller on both Wii and Wii U. Whether or not they'll be fully playable depends, but I think the true destiny of this adapter is making indie games feel even more like they existed at the time of their inspiration. Now I'm really curious in trying out RAFNET's other controller adapters for similar reasons. When I purchased my consolized MVS Neo Geo a while back, the only option for an included controller was one of the kidney bean style joysticks. I think it's decent, but honestly, it feels kind of flimsy. 
it wasn't long before I was on the lookout for some alternatives. The Neo Geo CD control pad is okay. I love the Micro Switch mini stick, but I found the button layout to be kind of unintuitive. The original style joystick, while iconic, tends to be a bit pricey at times. So, what other options are there? Well, my search for an alternate controller brought me to tototech.com, where I stumbled across a Neo Geo to PlayStation controller adapter for about 18 bucks. This device seemed like it would fit my needs perfectly. Not only would it fix my button layout issues, it also had some pretty cool extra features I was sure I'd get some use out of. Connecting to a standard DB15 pin input that both the AES and consolized MVS use for its controllers, this adapter is pretty lightweight, but it's sort of bulky. All you need to do is plug in a PlayStation 1 or 2 controller and you're good to go. This adapter enables the use of both the DualShock's left analog stick and the classic directional pad. Although I found myself using the latter most of the time, there was some instances where I found the analog stick to be the superior choice. The way that the Neo Geo's four button layout translates to a PlayStation pad is a bit different than the Neo Geo CD pad. While that controller puts the A and B button on the bottom row, and the C and D button on the top row, this adapter maps A to square, B to X, C to triangle, and D to circle. I found this setup worked great for most games, especially Metal Slug, where shooting and jumping are on square and X, exactly the way I like it. Gameplay felt tight in all instances, and if there was any lag, I couldn't tell. While the Neo Geo controller only needs four face buttons, don't think for a second that the shoulder buttons go to waste. There's some cool options here that can significantly change how certain games are played, both in terms of convenience and overall gameplay. Holding down R1 or R2 in conjunction with one of the face buttons will enable one of two levels of rapid fire for that button. I found this super useful for shock troopers because it allows your shooting direction to change to whatever direction you're moving without releasing the button. Normally, when you hold down the A button, your character will lock their firing direction, allowing you to strafe. This is handy too, but being able to quickly switch between the two styles of play without killing your hand was a game changer for me. Ninja Assault, on the other hand, well, you could say it's more or less broken with rapid fire. There's also a slow motion mode that you can enable by holding down L2 and pressing select. You turn it off by pressing L1 and then select. I suppose this is pretty cool, but slow motion modes where it's just quickly pausing and unpausing have always been more obnoxious to me than useful. Of course, all this is for naught if you think it's blasphemous to use a control pad with Neo Geo games. As I've said before, SNK's arcade sticks are the default best way to play. But what if you fantasize about using that heavy-duty USB arcade stick that you built for Street Fighter tournament play? Thanks to a homebrew developer who goes by the name Undamned, this fantasy is now a reality. Using his UD USB decoder adapter, you can now easily connect the USB game controller to a DB15 port. Several years ago, I spent a bunch of time and money customizing a PlayStation 3 WWE Brawl Stick with parts by Sanwa. If I could use this stick for some real arcade games, I'd be living the dream. My original draw to Undam's USB decoder was for its primary intended use, letting you enjoy a console fight stick on a super gun, which is essentially consolized arcade hardware. I had a hunch that the adapter might just work with my Neo Geo Omega from ArcadeWorks, and after checking with Undam to make sure I wouldn't fry the thing, it did indeed work. All right, now we are in business. The decoder adapter is powered by the five volt pin in the DB15 port. So all you have to do is plug it in, connect your USB controller and turn the system on. Since the decoder is heavily used in the fighting game community, zero input lag was a priority and I'm happy to report that I noticed none. Due to a different molding size, I found that the adapter would only fit loosely in the controller port of my consoleized MVS. It kept falling out. In the Neo Geo AES's case, it wouldn't even reach the pins inside the port. Thankfully, I found a workaround by using a controller extension to chain it through. After powering on, a solid green light inside the adapter will signal that it's up and running. That's really all there is to it. On a super gun, it's pretty much plug and play. But on a Neo Geo, you've got to customize the buttons a little bit. Since the default button decoding is optimized to account for a six button JAMA layout, you have to reassign your buttons. 
just hold down any three buttons on your controller as you boot the console. The green light will begin to flash, and you can map any input to any button, except for Start and Select. For the Neo Geo, just press whatever buttons in the location you want them, from A to D. Of course, you'll need to assign two additional buttons after those first four since the decoder is looking to place six buttons. Just put those on whatever buttons you're not using. Now, the adapter will not remember your button settings after you cut the power, so you'll need to do this every time you boot up. It's too bad there isn't a way to save this, but it makes sense since the decoder was designed to be used by the fighting game community. Anyways, let's try out a couple of USB controllers you no doubt have laying around. Even though I originally thought it would be worthless, especially with the last adapter I talked about, the DualShock 3 worked great. I found the button customization to be a huge deal. On a game-by-game -game basis, I came up with some pretty decent button layouts, most notably putting C on the R1 shoulder button in NAM 1975, which allows you to quickly dodge without taking your finger off the fire button. Oh yeah, this game feels awesome using the analog stick too. The only minor annoyance with using a DualShock 3 with this adapter is that if you're using a controller that's already synced to your PlayStation 3, as soon as you unplug the controller or turn off the Neo Geo, it sends a signal to your PS3 and turns it on. I also tried a wired Xbox 360 pad, and it worked perfectly, though the D-pad might be less than optimal for a lot of these games. My wireless receiver died years ago, but I tried using a wireless controller connected via a play and charge kit and I can confirm that this does not work. There's also no support for the Wii U Pro Controller. Although I prefer to use my arcade stick with the decoder, Undammed is constantly adding support for various controllers and fight sticks, with the DualShock 4 and the Xbox One controller being added in the future. Without a doubt, the Undammed DB15 to USB decoder is absolutely awesome. If it seems like something you can get some use out of, whether it be on your consoleized MVS Neo Geo or Super Gun, then they can be purchased from Paradise Arcade Shop for about $40. Be warned though, they arrive in batches as Undammed makes them, and tend to sell out fairly quickly. This is just a small sampling of all of the controller adapters out there. And all of this doesn't even get into the multitude of methods for adapting console controllers for use on PCs. Sure, there are a lot of crap accessories and adapters out there, but also plenty that show great ingenuity in getting around technical limitations, providing a more comfortable and customizable gaming experience, and even those that help retro classics on modern hardware feel a bit more authentic. <laughs>